Hey guys, welcome back. As you can probably guess by whatever I titled this video as, I'm going in for yet another service. This is my fifth service, I'm pretty sure, in six months. My car is now six months old, and I'm going in yet again to have some stuff addressed. So I'm heading back to the infamous Henrietta New York store, which is the closest one to me and that's like an hour and a half, but I came up early. Last night I stayed with a mom, she lives in Rochester. So I stayed there and now it is about 8.30 in the morning on Monday and I'm heading in to have them look at two issues. One is a brand new issue. It is this line that I'm getting on my reverse camera. So whenever I put the car in reverse, I get this crazy jumping line on my screen. It only seems to happen when it's really really cold out but i have three different videos from different days that i took of this dancing line so <laughs> when i get in there and they say oh well it's not doing it now or it's within spec i can say hey no here is the video here's the proof that it does happen i can't magically make the temperature zero degrees to recreate it but you have to like replace this camera or something prepared for a battle on that one i'm sure um so there's that. And then the other issue is my drivetrain shutter. I brought this issue up way back to the mobile tech just because I felt it a little bit, very faint. And that was back in probably month two. And he said he was gonna notate it in the account. I highly doubt they ever did. But either way, it didn't really show itself until coming back from Austin. For some reason on that trip home, I really started noticing the vibration a lot. So then I made the appointment at the Albany Service Center and turns out there's nothing they can do about it. I know a lot of people online are just starting to talk about this. And a lot of us know that the front motor in a Tesla Model X is the motor from the Tesla Model 3. So supposedly it's a totally different setup up front, <laughs> oversensitive radar camera. Uh, so supposedly it's a totally different setup up front and they don't have a solution for it, like the 2018 and previous shutter issue. Supposedly they are both totally different. So after that appointment in Albany, I was unsatisfied because the vibration is kind of annoying. It's mainly at low speeds, maybe between 10 miles per hour and 30, but also it'll happen if you're going up a hill, which in Ithaca, it's 80% hills, so I feel it a lot. And if you're giving us, there it is right there. I saw the camera shake, so I don't know if you could hear it. So it, it's just annoying and it's gotten a little bit worse since Albany. So I made an appointment at Rochester and they already texted me on Friday saying something like, there's nothing we can do about this that Albany couldn't do. I was kind of hoping they would have maybe a different solution. It's different people, so maybe a different idea, but it really is truly unacceptable to have this vibration on a brand new car of any price. So I'm really hoping that somebody has a solution for this at some point, but so far from what I've heard from many different people is that Tesla does not even have a solution. There's no solution. They have no parts to replace. They have no idea how to fix it, which is really just not acceptable. And I know I can already hear the comments. People are going to say, you've got a lemon, your car sucks and you need to return it to Tesla. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. You have to be able to show that you tried giving them multiple opportunities to fix a problem and they haven't been able to fix it. I've had a lot of small issues with my car, but none of them are the same issue. With a lemon law, it has to be the same exact issue that they cannot repair. So maybe this motor shutter is the ticket that I needed to get this car bought back from Tesla. I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself, especially if these guys watch my videos because then they're gonna know what I'm thinking. So maybe just scratch that entirely. <laughs> I might have to edit that out. I don't know, but I don't want to have to go through the lemon law process. But if it's a problem you can't fix, that's, that's a lemon. <laughs> so we'll see. Another thing that I have to watch out for and you have to watch out for if you have to deal with all this stuff what Tesla has been doing is labeling things on the service invoice, customer satisfaction. Now it has not been proven in court yet whether that would get them out of a warranty claim. So what I have to watch for on this trip and what you'll have to watch out for if you have any warranty issues is that instead of labeling it as a warranty claim or warranty repair, 
they're labeling it as like customer service or service replacement or customer satisfaction replacement, something like that. And it's not proven in court yet from what I've heard if that will save them from Lemon Law or any kind of lawsuits or anything. But it shows that they're being a little sneaky and they're trying. So be aware of that if you ever go into service and they have something that's obviously a warranty replacement or warranty repair and it says customer satisfaction. There's a lot of forums online. I've read other people complaining about this. It's a little weird. I'm just not sure how it's gonna affect people quite yet. I'm drawing a blank on his name. There's a Lemon Law lawyer on YouTube who did a video about that specifically with Tesla, I believe. I watched it a while ago. I'll try to find a link and post it below. But in his opinion, as an attorney, was that it, it wasn't gonna hold up in court. I hope that's the case. I mean, hopefully none of this goes to court and I don't have to deal with all that stuff, but something to think about at least. So I'm still probably 25 minutes away, crossing my fingers, really hoping this works out. Hopefully they don't give me yet another hard time, but we will see. Well, I just got out of the service center and everything went well. Really, there's not much to complain about with this visit. It still has the motor issue, but there's nothing they can really do about it yet, unfortunately. I guess I have a brand new camera in the rear, which is what I hoped would happen without too much trouble. And they really didn't give me any crap. I had to sign the service order with the price there, which I don't like that they do that, but it lists the price of like $630 for a replacement of the camera. And they do that in case something comes up that is not their fault or not covered under warranty or if they show that you tampered with something, you already signed the form. So there's that noise again. I don't know if you can hear this. It's happened a few times. Damn, now it just went away again. Oh, so since just getting it out, as soon as I left the place, something on the right over here, the climate controls, I assume, is hissing and rattling now. <laughs> oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, anyways, so I had to sign the service request stating that I would pay for this if it's not a covered repair. Thankfully, they didn't give me any crap and it was zeroed out on the final service ticket. Uh, the final service ticket did mention the drivetrain vibration issue, which is really what I wanted. And unfortunately, I didn't take a copy from him. He said he was gonna email it to me. Really stupid. I should have taken a copy from him. I haven't received the email yet. It's been a few minutes. So hopefully I do get that email and do get that service invoice as proof. Really stupid on my part for not taking that. Oh my God, there's that noise again. I don't know if that's coming up on the audio. Damn it. That's <laughs> just unbelievable. There's still nothing new on my other $4,000 issue. Oh my God, there's that noise. Let me turn the fan up. So as I was saying, there's still no changes with the $4,000 bill that Tesla left me. I tried fighting it with my credit card, but that went nowhere. I don't even know why, but my credit card company stopped responding to me. I sent them all the information, but either way, they haven't reversed the charge. Um, zero luck. So I'm still on the hook for $4,000 for the towing damage, which really blows. But yeah, I guess... That brings you up to date on my current saga for my Tesla Model X and my service issues. But now, if this stupid noise continues, I'm gonna to have to make another service appointment for that. I can't believe that. Like, that has not been a problem. That is brand new. And I just left the service center. Uh, but I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching, and 
stay tuned because obviously this is not over yet. <laughs> See you guys.